Go. Okay. So, welcome everybody uh, to our Sunday study. I'm Stephen Green. For those of you that don't uh, know me, I'm obviously a member here at Faith. I serve as the stewardship chairman on our church council, and uh, one of the uh, duties that I get to do is lead a Bible study on stewardship. Uh, so I'm going to be leading us over the next four or five weeks. Uh, Pastor Wilcox is teaching the upper grade class today that I would normally teach once a month. Uh, so uh, copies of the studies again are on your tables and pens and things can go around. Um, a little bit about what we're going to be doing. Um, everything is listed right on your lesson sheet as far as uh, where we're going to go, go through. I'll kind of give you a brief rundown. We're going to look over four sessions about uh, stewardship, the biblical principles of stewardship. And specifically, we're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapters 8 and 9. That's going to be the, the primary focus of uh, where we're going to look. That's considered in the New Testament like the stewardship chapters where it really does a lot of emphasis on this idea of stewardship. The idea is it's a model for from the first century that we can obviously apply to our lives today. And the purpose, why are we going to do this? Well, obviously we want to be encouraged right, as uh, believers to be more faithful, committed, and joyful as stewards with all that God has given us. And as we all know, right, through the, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit works through the Word and gives us the opportunity to, to grow in faith. Um, so we're obviously going to grow in faith together. So today's session is going to be what is Christian stewardship? And really the emphasis on the Christian aspect of stewardship, right? And this study isn't so much uh, like how to do it, but it's more of a like why do we want to be good stewards? It's not so much on methods as it is on our motives. Uh, so, um, with that being said, a little bit more about myself. Um, I teach high school, I teach in the Highland Public Schools. And I teach special education in the tier where we call resource. Um, prior to being at Faith, uh, I was a member at St. Paul's um, here in Tacoma. I, in my early mid twenties, um, I was pursuing the staff ministry program at St. Paul's and helped out for about four or five years. Um, I didn't go to MLC like some of our call workers did for like four years. I went like over summers and over correspondence courses, things like that. Um, so it's been a, a while since I've led adults. Uh, at St. Paul's, I would lead adults in studies often. So I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to, to grow uh, together with you guys. And the format we'll, we'll follow will be similar to what we all are used to uh, with, uh, obviously, uh, leader lecturing, but, but also a lot of uh, discussion within our own table groups. And I encourage you guys to, obviously, uh, questions and share as much as possible as we move forward over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, so, um, starting out, if you see session one, uh, what is Christian stewardship? If you want to take a couple minutes, you're going to see uh, about 10 different bullet points. We're going to look at that just a little bit at the beginning, and we're going to look also at those bullet points in our in our fourth session, but take about two three minutes. Oh, good morning, Michael. Good morning. Thank you. And extra copies. Perfect. Take about two three minutes at your table. Look at those uh, definitions of Christian stewardship that you see there uh, printed at the bottom. What are the strengths? What are their weaknesses? Which ones do you prefer? So we'll just take a few minutes to look through that kind of set the set the table of where we're going to be looking at. About two, three minutes. Are we managing or we're 
the other commission voted the other. It's just that word begin us lead, uh, start with a prayer today so I want to do that before we go into depth um, and discussion are there any prayer requests or, or anything that we want I know I'm going to pray for thanks for the new school uh, the classrooms being dedicated tomorrow uh, please pray for my cousin and her husband who fell and he will probably have to go into a nursing Okay. She's got a lot of decisions to make. Yeah, Carolyn and Fred. Car Carol and Fred? Yeah. Okay. Other prayers? Okay. Gracious Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to gather here together and gather around your word where we receive comfort and uh, we receive wisdom and strength. We first pray for um, Marlene's. Uh, cousins uh, Fred and Carol uh, who are going to be dealing with moving into new living facilities uh, bring comfort and bring peace uh, to this couple and to the family as they uh, move to the place that you have for them um, bless all the efforts and uh, the staff and all the new people that are going to be there um, to welcome them into their new home and we also pray uh, Lord and we give thanks uh, for our church and our school and the uh, New classrooms that finally now are going to be uh, open tomorrow for students to come in and, and to learn. We ask for blessings uh, on the teachers and on the students' opportunities to, to grow in 
skills and knowledge, and most of all, the, the blessings of, of growing in your word. Um, bless our school in, in coming years and our congregation as we study and learn how to be stewards with what you've given us, Lord. Give us joy and give us great zeal as we uh, grow in sharing your love with our community and with those around us. Uh, bless us today and always. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay, everybody. So, the, the first uh, part here, uh, definitions of stewardship. There's not really a right or wrong answer, per se, because it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of these different things. We're going to look a little bit more um, at these, but the, the kind of the idea is to get us thinking about um, the, the consequence of, of becoming believers, right? The consequence of having this uh, born-again experience. Um, we, we have a new life within us, right? We have a new purpose. And uh, in a broad sense, it's really a study of our like, sanctified life, right? We would call that sanctification. So what we're going to look at today is uh, three or four different truths uh, to kind of give us a, a better idea of, of what sanctification is. So a lot of the terminology that we're going to see are going to be things we're obviously familiar with, but I think it's important, and the, uh, the authors of the study obviously set it up this way, because to understand stewardship as believers, uh, we want to first see that it's really the, this part of our entire sanctified life, right? Our entire life as Christians. It's not this separate thing. Um, it's, it's part of everything, right? So the definition of sanctification that we see right there, if you're looking on the t uh, part, or page three is, on, is where it is on mine, it says, the new life, both of the heart and of the conduct, affected in regeneration. Uh, in simpler terms, I guess, we could say, the, where does our new life begin as a believer, as a Christian? Where does it start? It's got a, it, we, we see, we could say it starts, yeah. Say at baptism. Sure, at baptism, right? Mm -hmm. Right, and it starts kind of within us. We could say it starts within our, Maybe our heart, right? It starts at that time. And then it becomes visible, right? It becomes visible in, in our conducts, right? In our actions and how we live our lives. So in, in, in the, the study emphasis, again, is, is Christian stewardship, right? We're talking about our life as believers. So before we are born again, right, or before we are um, brought to life, we, we don't have that ability to, to be good stewards, if, if you will, right? I can be a good steward in lots of diff different ways in society, right? In, in civic things, but when it comes to, as a believer, as, as God-pleasing uh, works, it's impossible. So, obviously, we're going to look a little bit at the, the old part within us. Um, the other part that is described here, and I've never heard it this way, but it's, it's interesting. It says, sanctification is a medicinal act um, that is, it makes us better than we were, right? Performed in the heart of man, which produces an inherent habitual righteousness. So as God molds us into his image, right? Um, it's, it's this medicinal act. It's, it's constantly happening. Or it's constant, we're constantly growing. And that, that sanctified, right, that comes after. Whereas the, the, the justified, the, the term justification, right, that we're all justified uh, through what Christ has done, that's more of this de declaratory act that, that's done outside of us, where God's giving to us salvation. It's, it's been accomplished already, right? Um, whereas... Again, this is it's it's ongoing. It's it's our entire lives um, as believers, and it's different in that respect, right? It's different than being being born again. Thoughts or uh, wonderings as you are looking at those two descriptors there at the top, Josh. I just like that reminder that justification is that's a done deal. It's been declared done deal, but that's saying uh, stewardship, sanctification. 
application is not involved. Yeah. Just a good reminder. Uh, not that we probably, I know we realize that, but a good reminder that this is something that keeps going. This side of heaven is going to be a part of our life, stewardship, sanctification. We yeah. Can't help, we can't help but do it. It's the way we live as a Christian. So. And we don't like reach some pinnacle, if you will, I guess, right? Like, oh, I'm. Now I'm sanctified. Like it's it's we we continue to do it. We continue to uh, be molded in into that image and to perform different works and do different things. Good. Other other thoughts, Deb. Yeah. I really liked it because um, that truth too. It says the lingering pre presence of the old man, meaning our sinful human nature. That's why it's ongoing, because we have that sinful nature that keeps coming back over and over and over again, that we need to fight um, to live as Christians as God wants us to. Yeah. So, I like that part in there. Yeah, you're bringing us perfectly right into our next, our next point, right? We have, we have the, the flesh always, right? Just, just right next to the new man, and it's letting the new the new man, the new woman, right? The new life within us lead us. Um, and, and that's, again, obviously why we need so much of, of God continuing to work within us. We need uh, each other, right? We need our faith community. We need uh, the Word of God and, and others to give us encouragement and to give us opportunity. We have uh, many, many blessings when we look at it. So that first truth, again... Looking at, it's a part of our um, life of sanctification, right? It's, it's, it's this part of who we are. And then I'll read that second truth. We, we're seeing some pretty big terms here. And those that are, can speak Latin or some of these other terms better than me, please, I apologize if I butcher the <laughs> pronunciation. But it says, sanctification, because of the lingering presence of the old man, is unlike justification, which is instant and complete. Sanctification is a process and is always incomplete. Luther says in the Christian is simul justus et peccator, I think, if I'm saying that right, peccator, at the same time righteous and sinner. Um, so we have that dual nature. And we're going to look a little bit at the, the, just these descriptions of, of what it, like Deb said, we're fighting against it, right? So, so what does that look like when we're fighting against this, the, the old nature within us? We have uh, four different passages. I guess if I can assign them to some different groups. Uh, Ephesians 4.22. Somebody wants to get Ephesians 4.22. Uh, thank you, Natalie. And then... Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14, or, or maybe at your groups, maybe we can do this. Choose one, and then uh, we'll, dis we'll do discussion. If you want to choose one at your table, um, and then in about three, four minutes, we'll come back, and we'll review that way. Sound good? Choose one at your table. Uh, 2 Corinthians 2.14, Romans 8, and Romans 7. Go for it. Anybody want to?
stick around. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. have that one that they were also looking at that they saw something yeah yeah in my notes it uh, everything is me first it's kind of all about me and what I want right um, what I can possess the pride that I have uh, within me right and then the things that are with out in the world that are <laughs> yeah, it motivated really by self more than anything. First uh, Corinthians two fourteen well, wants to share Corinthians. I know we Deb, go ahead. Or were you just getting your shirts? Sorry. I know when we're here, Jill. We were talking a little bit about Corinthians two. Yeah, um, the old man is unwilling and unable because he is the old man. It's impossible for the old man to understand spiritual things. They're only understood through the spirit. The old man is not the spirit. It's right. the flesh. Yeah, it, it talks about uh, the things of God being foolishness, right? And it, what, what was the other word? We, it, spiritually it's, evaluated, right? Yeah. Wasn't that what the Heritage Version said? Yeah. Um, versus discern is what we're used to seeing, but it's impossible for without the Spirit of God, right, to discern the things that are that are God pleasing. It, it's I think in Ephesians we're, it's described as we're being dead, right? So obviously, in that uh, state, there's nothing that we can do uh, to accept what God has to say. How about Romans uh, chapter eight, seven and eight? Um, if you want to share, go yeah, read. Go ahead. Uh, so this would be NIV. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. But those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. So the attitude there is one of hostility, hostility <clears throat> which is pretty pretty a good descriptor, right? If you think of by nature, we are hostile to God in his, his ways. And then we can't do anything because, go ahead, uh, 
Yeah, uh, the Romans passage is a follow-up to the Corinthians passage. That uh, <coughs> we, we, we're, we, we're just resistant to it. The old man is just resistant. Uh, you can't accept. The world sees this as nonsense. Right. Okay? So then from there comes the hostility. It's not the other way around. They have, they have to reject it first. Right. And we see the hostility played out in a lot of different different ways, just in, in mindsets and in uh, attitudes towards things of God. Um, yeah, and, and there's no ability, there's no desire to, to want to accept the things of God. Good. Uh, Romans 7, 22 and 23. It goes a little bit more uh, now explaining this even more. Maybe you want to share 7, 22, 23? Yeah, Go you. ahead, Michael. Uh, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law, but I see another law at work in me, waging war against the law of my mind, and making me a prisoner of the law of <clears throat> sin at work with me. So there's a conflict. Yeah, the peaceful coexistence between the old man and the new man is impossible, right? There, there's, there's opposites, and then there's this internal conflict. Yeah, that, that's the war that the Christian wages. The, uh, <clears throat> the world at large doesn't bother with that. They haven't gotten that far. Right. This is the, the, uh, what the Christian goes through every moment of every day. Is this conflict within us? Yeah. Th th thanks for, for emphasizing that. This is obviously now as a believer, right? And we can all attest to this in our own different ways, right? Within our own minds, the new life within us, right? We still have that, that flesh within us. And that's all the more reason, obviously, as we know, right? Why we want to continue to grow in the word. Why we want to continue to, to do what we're doing, right? To, to come together to... <clears throat> Let the new man within us lead us and, and let God's spirit within us, let, let that be the lead. Margie. Well, it, it seems, you know, I, I know I've had kids when I was teaching Sunday school. Said, well, how come God let us do that? We he gave us a free will, so you get to choose. You're not a puppet, right? So when you have the world at you like this, and then you say, well, here's what, here's what God says, then you get to make you know, it's only through the Holy Spirit in your heart that can help you make the right choice. Yeah. Yeah, and that's and that's where we... Go ahead, Josh. Well, I just said what Tom was saying, too, about that struggle that we as Christians have, yeah. that the world doesn't, fits right in with our sermon today about crosses. That's exactly why we have crosses, that's like because it's that struggle. If we weren't Christian, we wouldn't have those crosses. It doesn't mean we wouldn't have hardship. That's, we all... My car breaks down. Okay, that's a result of a sinful world. Christian, non Christian, doesn't matter, but a cross, when a Christian says, I have any crosses, sometimes we get that mixed up. It's, it's the struggle between the reason yeah. I'm a Christian, and that's why I have crosses, not, oh, my life is hard right now. Well, everyone's life is hard before the simple world, but yeah. it's that struggle between that old man. So it's per perfectly tied into our sermon. Yeah. So if you haven't been to worship yet, there's a little, a little teaser. <laughs> You know, the, these words, uh, old man, can be somewhat elusive. Uh, back in the day, <clears throat> uh, our pastor, Pastor Longy, tall and lanky, the pulpit was raised. He would almost fall out of the pulpit during the sermon, railing against this stuff, and it was the old Adam. And the idea that was planted in your mind was Adam sinned. That's it. Adam sinned. And then what happens? Well, all of this happens because of Adam. This old man kind of diffused. Adam specific. It's the old Adam within him. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's that part of us, right? Like that 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 is there. That is that's always gonna be there until we 
yep. of this world, right? Yep. So that account, that old Adam that's in us is every one of these, and of course more. Yeah. So the effect of this old Adam, this old man within us, and that's we're going to look at the next few points here on our our idea and our focus is on Christian living, right? Christian stewardship. So the effect of the old man upon us, the old man would change Corinthians 10 31 to read, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of self, right? Within us, that it's all just about glorifying self. And the next part, the old man would not does not ask what I can do for others, but what's in it for me. It's always going to be about me and, and what's best for me, right? That that's always going to be there. the The materials of this world, the material wealth of this world, is loved more, right? The the things of this world more than God, more than the things of God. Uh, that we see some points, bullet points there. Uh, we don't need to go into a ton of depth, I don't think, because we all can pretty uh, much understand the old old Adam being greedy, right? Being wanting things for self, covetous, wanting more, wanting other other things and, and whatnot. Idolatrous, that comes in so many different forms. Envious, this world-minded, self-centered, materialistic, uh, more concerned about getting than giving, selfish, desirous of self-glory. Uh, all those things we all do, right? In, in, in some way, shape, or form. That's what we're battling against Our, in a society, obviously, too, where we're inundated so much with so, so many things, right? Um, for yourself and, and whatnot. Um, <laughs> you deserve it? Yeah. Sure. That's what they tell you. So, according to, to our flesh, the, the old man within us, uh, a response of Christian stewardship, right? Again, God-pleasing stewardship. We can't, we can't do it according to that, the flesh. There, there's no way. Uh, and <clears throat> before we move into the, the, the good news, right, the, the gospel part of it, what are some non-Christian stewardship motives? Like, when we, if we look at it a little bit more in depth, that's the last uh, part of the question. What are some non-Christian stewardship motives? Really? I'm doing this to be a better person. I'm oh, helping yeah. society, and um, you know, they'll say he was such a good person and helped and did all that. Yeah. I think that I mean, you see it in this area a lot, I think, when they call up for help for this this or that, you know, there's the people are really generous in giving, I think. But she loved everybody and and was kind and was so spiritual. What does that mean? Yeah. Spiritual. What does that mean? Yeah, on the outside it might look okay, right? I, I'm, I'm doing this, these good things, or I'm doing these things there. Um, it could be there, right? But, but if it's, again, that there's no spirit of God within it, it's, it's not, it's not Christian stewardship. It's not motivated in the right way. Okay, any other examples before we move in to the next part? You want to be recognized? Yeah. Sure. Well, and, and this is this is such a hard one too because in philanthropy, in so many different ways, right? You, there's so many ways people are recognized. Um, you know, if just I can just think of whatever nonprofit organization, and they'll list names, or they'll you'll have something there to be recognized with. And, and some people really, really want that, right? Uh, recognition, praise from other people. Yeah, yeah. To feel better than others. You know, there are people that, you know, well, 
I do this and this and this, and that person doesn't do anything. So it's all about themselves and elevating themselves sometimes. Yeah, comparing ourselves to other people, yeah. yeah. It's like when you go to a funeral of a non-Christian, and everybody says how great, you know, they have to talk about how great he was and all the great things he did because it wasn't for Christ that he did it, he did it for himself. Sure. Yeah, Gary. I'm tired. Coffee's strong. <laughs> so they sit here and listen, right? It's kind of interesting to me, and maybe I, I see it a different way. That as everything we talk about, what Christian stewardship is, and is, and what the world's doing, and it isn't, is the same exact thing I see happening in churches on a regular basis. So when we talk about stewardship, is it something that something that you strive for, but all the time knowing that it's everywhere, in every part of your life, inside the church, outside the church, and through the church, and around the church. So as you talk about stewardship, it should be, is it, are you saying that it should be something where we say, okay, this is what we need to strive for, knowing that even though you're a Christian, you're not doing that, or we're not doing that? Well, it's more the, the why of why we're doing it, I think, right? Because we can all, I think, look at ourselves from the lens of the atom and see our false motives, right? Even, like, there's, there's, it's there. But the lens that we're looking at it from is from Christ, right? Christ's love compels us. So it's, yes, it's, it, I guess we can come across as, well, we're looking at them we're looking at ourselves, I think, too, but it, from the lens of the atom within us, those without Christ, th their motivation is the same as our flesh, right? Um, yeah, I understand. And, that, and what we're, that's, I think, why we're doing this study, too, right, is to help us look at more why we're also, why we're doing... Well, yeah, but... What I learned from you is... But what, yeah. you're, you're bringing us... It's a great segue into the next section, Gary. Yeah. Because the new man within us, right? Yeah. Is, is, where, is what we're striving for. And that's, that's the, the lead there. Yeah, I think what you, what, you made me, what you made me realize is how screwed up, how screwed we are. I mean, if the Israelites couldn't get it right, and they were with God, we definitely not get it. So you, like, you can kind of help me understand yeah, okay. what it is. This is kind of depressing, I guess. Yeah, it is depressing. First way to start this lesson, like we're looking at all this <laughs> negative stuff. But, <laughs> no, but we're not. We're, we're not. But that, God, we're not. But if you look at it in other sense, it's, and it's a battle every day. It is. Yeah. Amen. So I'm done. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. But, but it's, I'm glad you, you say that because we can, if we, if we only see it from the one lens, then yeah, that, then it is hopeless. But thanks be to God, right? He's given us the victory. He's given through Jesus Christ our Lord, right? Thanks, you know, be to God. Who who can rescue me from this right body of sin, right? The Paul says. I think that's the beauty of a good reminder for us of why we come here on a weekly basis, hopefully more than once, and that we go into the Word because to be human is to be a poor steward. Yeah, <laughs> we come. We come to the Word, and the Lord comes to us to remind us that. But I've got the, I've got the forgiveness for that, and that we re are reminded every time. Yeah, I am a poor steward. Le Lord, through Your help and through the gospel message that motivates me, maybe I won't be such a hog with my time, and I will use my time for You instead of myself. And yeah, so that's a good reminder. Because to, to be human is to be a poor steward. We, we all are. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> And bringing it back to our, our earlier point, Gary, why God is making us better than we were through through this this sanctified process and coming here. We're trying God is making us better than we were. And he's molding us as we go along, right? So let's let's look at the good part. The way that the way the new life within us, the new Adam, right, within us. Um, 2 Corinthians 5.17 and maybe let's take another another 3-4 uh, minutes um, at your table we're in the, sec the second section there 
the way that scriptures describe the new man. Take a look. Ephesians 4, 24, Romans 6, 7, Romans 7, 22. We'll come back in four minutes.
Okay, so the good the good news now the, the new life within us we see the way God describes us with within what He's created within us faith and, and the new life. What do we see in, in 2 Corinthians five seventeen? How is that? How are we described? We like to share Second uh, Corinthians five seventeen. Go ahead. Uh, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. So, new creation. New creation. What Peter, as you were like reading that and thinking, like, what do you think of new, like, new creation? Fresh. The old is gone. So it's completely new. Fresh, yeah. <laughs> well, and if you think of like, like fruit, like when you see fresh fruit and you taste it, and then you see like this old fruit, like bananas, and the, like the taste, it's like so much better, right? And that's the. It's hard for us, but that's what God sees in us: is is this new, fresh life, right? That's been born again. Not simply reformed or rehabilitated. Yeah, new. new. Not rehabbed. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Like that. That's pretty up, Gary. Like that's not depressing. Yeah. <laughs> new, <laughs> fresh. You're fresh and new. Yeah, but you're right? still in the city. You're still in the city. But world. yes, yeah. but you're also you're also new. Yeah, I'm fresh meat. Just just. <laughs> <laughs> The world so yes, but okay. What else? So Ephesians four. We were, we were reading Ephesians four twenty four. What, what do we hear in Ephesians four? Searching for the new, the true righteousness of God. So you're like God. Yeah, in in in, in holiness and righteousness. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It, it reminds me of that. Yeah. Well, and if you think too of of like our the motives then, right? Like like before sin, Adam and Eve, everything they did was was pleasing to God, and all and how they they lived. So now God is giving us new motives and new new in what we're doing and how we're living. Uh, it's it's righteous, like it's holy. It's God. It's pleasing to God. Which, on the contrast of, of the other motives, that, that's the difference, right? And, and that's the part where it's, we can't take credit for what God is doing within us, but we're taking what God has done for us, and we're, that's the life, right? Uh, Romans 6, and then well, the other one, uh, too, we were saying, uh, Michael, the, the Colossians 3.10. And that word, uh, you, I think you use ref renewed. Renewed. Yeah, the word there is renewed, but yeah, it's, it's, it's refreshed. It's fresh, freshened up. You know? Renewed, which which kind of brings to that that freshness, that renewed renewedness. I use the example of painting my fence this new red color versus the old drab. It, like it, it looks, it's better. Bad example, but <laughs> that's renewed. Romans six, seven, six and seven. Romans 6, uh, to what is the new man no longer a slave? Yeah. And we're, what else does it describe there? It talks about being buried with Christ in our baptism. Debbie had mentioned that at the very beginning, right? Where we're baptized. Think about that, right? Like when it, when it began, we're... We're buried with Christ in that in that new ba in that baptism. The power or the of of sin being a slave to it it's it's not something that we can be a slave to anymore. I love that idea of being a slave because in to the world 
but by itself it sounds horrible. No one wants to be a slave, yet we are and we do and we want to be. We want to be Christ's slave. It's an awesome thing to be. Yeah. So does that, you know, so again, that means you submitting to your Savior, but you want to. You're like, yes, happily, joyfully. No, again, that's the new man through Christ. Yeah. But normally you say that. Who's going to say I want to be a slave? We do. <laughs> yeah, slaves to God, slaves to his righteousness. To be a slave to yeah. Jesus. Yeah, and in fact, like coming together, we, we come here because we want to, right? Not because we have to, because we want to. And, and the things that we we do for in faith and for our for everyone and, and with our faith community, right? We want to do this. It's it's putting a, that new perspective. And then next point, Romans seven, uh, like you were saying, Josh, how does the new man feel about God's will? Delights in it, isn't it? In Psalm one, where it talks about how blessed is the man who you know does the will of God. He delights in following God's ways day in and day out. And if you think about, I guess, our lives as believers, it, it's not so much a feeling, but sometimes you, you, when you're, it, it is such a, a refreshing, it is such a great thing to be hearing the, the good news, to be hearing God's promises and to be responding to those things. So the uh, effects of the new man upon stewardship, the new man says, whether I eat or drink or whatever I do, I want to do it all to the glory of God. So whatever we're doing, we're, we're now we want to we want to glorify God in what we're doing. The new man does not ask what's in it for me, but what can I do for others? The new man loves God rather than material wealth. The new man is, and then here's the contrast, right, of those those. Other points we looked at, we're, we're generous, right? We're generous with the blessings God has given to us. Uh, and we're content with what we have. We're content. We're satisfied. Spiritual minded, right, too, right? Our, our mind is, talk about earlier, oh, somebody did it for the spiritual. Well, the, the mind is of of Christ and of, of things of God. God-centered. And more concerned about giving than getting, desirous of God's glory rather than self-glory. So again, that's the that's the contrast. Uh, the new man can produce only Christ, only a Christian stewardship response. So thoughts uh, as we are wrapping up truth two. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Bonnie. I was just going to say, it's, in a way, it's really comforting to know that it doesn't all depend on me and that all of these are a response to the gift God has given to me. And then it's, I feel like it's less pressure. Yeah. Because I don't have to do this, I get to do this. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, the, it, it, the motivation is completely different. And the work of the church doesn't depend on you. The, the work of the church is, is there for you, and it's just, it, these are opportunities. And, and the more we, we do it, right, the more we, we look at it from that perspective. It, it's, yeah, it's, def, it's not a burden. It, it's, a, it's a joy. Well, just think of how many examples of that we had in the last however long with the portable project. I mean, I got to see Larry and Don and Gary get to put in lockers yesterday. <laughs> I got to see, you know, the Bleasdale boys and Andy Bishop and everyone else that helped put in flooring. You know, it wasn't we were doing it late into the night, doing it. You know, they have they have their jobs as well, but coming to do stuff like that. Just how many, how much we've seen that in the last however months. You know, Larry being there here every day doesn't have to be here. He's here. You know, yeah. so just all the examples you've yeah, seen of absolutely. activity in a physical project is pretty cool to see. Pretty awesome. So yeah, so when you know with that building inspector, make sure you tell them that when you you know 
like like those things of initially like oh my gosh like why are you doing this to us and, and this is pushing us back and not that you were saying that but like <laughs> really now you now you see it was <laughs> okay I guess you were but regardless we all were saying that why is this happening why is this delayed and you just summed it up beautifully like well there you go right it's it's the good works God prepared in advance. For people to do, and and Josh, from that, Josh, the encouragement. <laughs> that was nice. You're welcome. Let me do that. You are welcome. <laughs> we thank you. You can stop letting me do that. <laughs> but no, thank you. You're up that, to that's that. a great, <laughs> But that's a great a great point because just in you sharing that, I think it, that's encouraging for other for those of us to hear that. Right? Like, wow, I didn't know that that those things, and that's an encouragement. And I'm sure that the, all the things that happen through, through that, it's 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 a great thing. Stephanie, yeah. More in addition to that, we had the youth group that was helping out too. This, you know, as soon as we got that occupancy, they were zipping things over there. And I don't. I think when I talked to Dawn, she's like, "Yep, they just hopped in and did it. They didn't sit here and drag their feet. They just all went." Mm, sort of. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sort of. They, they were, an opportunity. They had the opportunity to help. So, but they did, right? Yeah. They did. And they're still learning on this, you know, on, on how to serve too, but they did. So, yeah, they absolutely. They made pancakes. They did, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Good. Well, that's that's our time. And, and uh, one of the, the reward is... These tables can stay, right? They don't need to, you don't need to get up and get the chairs. Like this routine of... Uh, I don't know, we got used to it. Let's just put them away. If you, if you, if you want... Uh, we'll let you put them away. So, in some... Next week, we're going to look at then... Uh, the, go- the, mo- the proper motivation, the gospel motivation. We're going to look at the fact that what we do, like Bonnie was alluding to, it flows from the gospel. The, the good news, what God has done for us, our lives as Christians, our, our lives as stewards, if you will, the motivations from what God has done. And that gives us the greatest motivation and the greatest purpose. So I'll close this with the prayer and we can uh, head out today. Lord, we thank you again for the opportunity to grow together uh, in your word. We thank you that you've created within us new life and you continue to mold us. You continue to refresh us and renew us. And and we thank you that we can be reminded of that and that we can encourage each other and have a faith church and school and and all the blessings that you give to us. Continue to to guide us and continue to bring us together. Grant us a, a great week and let all things go well with the new dedication tomorrow of the new school building. And bless us all this week and bring us back again in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Amen. Um, if you want, yeah, because we are going to, if you want me to collect them or if you want to keep them, that's fine. Because we're only about halfway through. That was kind of the idea. The first lesson might take two sessions.